I suppose it's time for an update. Some of you have been asking me what's going on with the renovation and by and large, this is definitely the most disappointing renovation um, that I can remember. So we're just over two months in. Uh, and as you can see from behind me, this uh, does not, this does not look good, right? This is not up to my expectation. And unfortunately, since I planted this lawn, it's been just over two months, right at two months since I did this project. It has only rained one time since the middle of August. We had one decent rain that was like, you know, a full day. We got like six inches of rain in one day. And ever since then we got had nothing. So, um, there have been some problems because of that. So let's take a deeper look. Lots of bare spots in here. Goose grass, all, all in this whole thing, really. And then, uh, if you can see in here, quite a bit of, well, it's dead now, but that was nuts edge. So because there has been no rain and let's just get to set. So I, I am irrigated, all right. Um, and I've been watering this lawn every three days now on my regular schedule and it is filling in slowly. I mean, if you look at it from certain angles, especially in other areas like this corner over here, that gets a little bit of shade. This is thickening up nicely. This is a little bit more of kind of what I would expect from a two month old lawn. But out in this area, where it stays particularly dry. I have to water this a lot. It's just not filling in like it's supposed to be. Even over here on the north side of my house, this is about as good as it gets. I have one bare spot here, but for the most part, I mean, this looks excellent, right? This is the same grass that we have growing in the front yard, just completely different conditions than we have in other places. And we'll get to the backyard here in a minute, but that's a completely different story. In this area, we brought in 20 tons of topsoil, and with that topsoil brought a lot of weed pressure. Now, the weed pressure typically wouldn't be that bad, but in this case, it took so long for this turf to establish that the weeds really took over, and they loved the fact that it was really warm coming into the fall. We had a little bit warmer fall than we typically would get, and with less rainfall, the weeds really took the opportunity to kind of take over. And if you look at some of this goose grass that's in here, you can see it's kind of got a white color to it. All of this I sprayed out with Pylex. So I would typically use something like um, Fusilade 2 on goose grass, but because this turf is so young uh, and fragile, really, because of the conditions, I didn't want to spray any Fusilade on it. So I opted to go with Pylex and Pylex uh, really did a good job of controlling all the goose grass in here, but you can see it looks terrible because all of the white bleached goose grass, it really sticks out. It makes the grass look really, really light colored, but there's a lot of really good turf in here. It just hasn't had a chance to thicken up. And the same can be said for all of the nuts edge that was growing in this lawn at one point before I killed it off. Uh, I used some Halsafuron come over the top and it got rid of all the nuts edge in here but that was essentially a byproduct of me watering so much because I was trying to keep up with the warm temperatures and no precipitation I was running my sprinklers constantly and so this was just warm wet dirt that got a bunch of nuts edge that popped on it and it was probably here in the dirt when I brought it in but that's just one of those things another question that I would get is did you spray tenacity whenever you put the seed down and the answer is yes but that is not tenacity is not a silver bullet for things like this. You're going to run into some issues. Just keep that in mind if you do a renovation. So that brings me to the point of this video is the single most important thing you can do during a renovation is what I'm doing today is I'm mowing. Every three, sometimes two days, I'm out here mowing this because it's going to encourage it to thicken up as quickly as possible. I'm also watering on my regular irrigation schedule now. I've defaulted back to my two to three times a week, uh, deep and infrequent watering. I want the roots of this grass to really drive down deep to help it establish before it goes dormant. Because we're now at a turning point where just a few days ago, it was 95 degrees. And now we're at highs in the 60s, literally within just a few days, and we're getting lows in the 30s. So this, is, this grass is gonna shut down fairly soon. I'd be lucky to have four more weeks of solid growing season here to try and get this to establish. But 
It has just been the slowest establishing renovation I have ever had. Um, and really sometimes the weather just does not cooperate and doesn't agree with what you're trying to do. So if that happens to you, this is what you got to do. I would encourage you to come out and mow, even on an established lawn or just if you're, if you're overseeding, mow as much as you can until the lawn goes dormant. Mowing is the single most important thing you can do for your lawn. All right, now coming back here to the backyard, if you've been following me for any amount of time, you know, I always complain about the amount of shade I get in this backyard. And I get people in the comments that say, oh, there's a lot of dappled sun back there. You don't get that much shade. It's one o'clock in the afternoon. And this backyard is almost completely shaded uh, at this point. And I don't get a lot of sun in the morning because it's blocked by the house. So what are the other side of challenges we got going on back here? Well, not quite as many. This, uh, this is much more dense back here than it is in the front yard largely because the shade doesn't allow it to dry out as quickly back here. And I also don't get the sun that beats down on this backyard like it does out in the front. And if you remember from the last update, this was basically this area over here. It's kind of the hillside was completely bare. It has started to fill in a little bit, a lot better than it was, but not nearly as much as the areas over here that catch a little bit more water and get a little bit more shade. It looks a whole lot better on this side of the yard than it does on the hillside. Okay, so like I said, in these areas you need to continue to mow. Obviously, I need to come back here and cut this and get some of these leaves up out of here. But for the most part, I'm pretty pleased with the way this backyard is filled in. It's, you know, it's looking pretty good. It's going to look really nice in the spring. Um, and probably check out a little bit sooner than it is in the front. Typically the backyard goes dormant about a week or two faster or sooner, I should say, um, than the front yard. But um, really all you can do is, is keep mowing, uh, pray for some rain. Uh, there's not a single drop in the forecast for the next 10 days. So we will see about all of that. So I'll probably do at least one or two more updates before the end of the year on these renovations. Um, and just to disclose too, so in the front, is the Mountain View Seed, uh, the Tall Fescue Blend of Optimum that's brand new for this year that they released. And then back here, uh, I did a blend of Xanadu by Berenbrug or Jacqueline. Um, Berenbrug owns Jacqueline. Uh, Providence Tall Fescue and Daybreak is what we've got growing back here. So I will provide a few more updates on this so you guys can keep an eye on how things are going. Once again, thanks for watching. Don't forget, give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks.